As I started to look at schools and for college, I started to look at schools using the three A's. Uh, something my grandfather taught me back when I was a little younger, when I first got my first offer. And um, he told me three A's stand for academics, atmosphere, and athletics. And so I was going through the process. A big thing, my mom's a teacher, so academics was the biggest A for her. Um, so I definitely needed to go somewhere with strong academics. BC stands, like, speak for itself. And I've actually been to a, a few BC games at the time. And so I knew the atmosphere. I knew how the city of Boston, um, Boston College fans all stood behind their programs, whether it's the Patriots, the Celtics, the Bruins. Um, they definitely stand behind them, passionate. And that's something I wanted to be a part of. And thirdly, um, the athletics. I want to be a part of something where I feel like BC, when I, when I first got here, I felt like BC was something that was on the verge of being something great, and I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to be a part of building the program. I wanted to be a part of being able to, when I look back in five, 10 years, and BC's a powerhouse, being able to tell my kids, like, hey, I, I was a part of that. I helped, I helped bring that to where it is now. And I mean, it's something that BC's done in the past, and you know, I just wanted to be a part of this. You, you see guys like, Doug Flutie, the Matt Ryans, the Luke Keekleys, who have been on these amazing miracle teams or just amazing teams in general. And it's not just something that happens overnight. You see the progress beforehand and how it, uh, uh, how it came to fruition. And I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to be with the Doug Fluties, the Luke Keekleys, the Matt Ryans. There's just so much that I've developed here and so many more tools that I have in my tool shed that I'm um, excited to show off um, this year and upcoming years. They embrace the traditions and honor of those who played before them, knowing that any height can be reached. Throws it down. Booty, 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 booty. Cut by Cut. Boston College. Cut. I don't believe it. Cut. Cut. The Eagles win it, win it, win it, win it. Upholding the values of compassion, integrity, and service for their families, their teammates, and their school. They leave here prepared for any field. This is what makes college football so fun. They put on the maroon and gold, knowing that not everyone can play here, as at their core, they are true student athletes. This is heart. This is pride. This is worth cheering for. This is Boston's college. Welcome to Boston College Football. Decide to fly. Well, I think what you're seeing, uh, we ju I just walked upstairs, the new indoor facility and weight room is done, and the facility is just so first class. That in itself has got great momentum and shows such a great symbol of the commitment to our athletic program, to our football program. I think our recruiting has been, uh, every year has gotten better and better, and I think we project us to have seven to nine NFL players off of, uh, off of this year's senior class. So I think that creates momentum and creates buzz. I think the fact that we've been to four bowl games in, in, out of the last five years and the fact that we have so many preseason honors and, and guys that are being recognized for their ability both academically and athletically in this conference, I think on a national scale, that gives us momentum. I think the fact that all of our sports here have, have done so well and, and, and appear and are on their rise. I think uh, given the fact that you watch us academically and our business program is now the third ranked business program in America and you know just a great academic standing that we have continues to grow. It's always been great but it continues to grow. I think it just shows an unbelievable surge here at Boston College on every front. So we've talked about academics, we're talking about athletics, we're talking about players, we're talking about facilities. Um, and, and, and I just think that it's been phenomenal. And, and, and I think also the chemistry and the glue that we have on our football team are such great ambassadors, our players, and, and so believe in what Boston College is all about, about you know, faith, about academics, about athletics, about bringing the best out of each other, about making a difference out in the world. And I think that in itself has caught great momentum. So there's a lot of good things going on. Here.
As the 2018 season started, there were high expectations for a team full of momentum. For some, like quarterback Anthony Brown and center John Baker, the road to this year was full of arduous recovery work after suffering season-ending injuries in 2017. But when you come to Boston College, you are forever part of the team. It's never easy to be injured, but you know they do a great job here with the with the medical staff. You know, getting you back, getting you right, making sure you have everything you need in that capacity. And then you know, I was having the offensive line with me. It was uh, it was really helpful. They're uh, they're great guys, and they made sure I was never alone. And you know, after every win, they come up to me and hug me and made sure I felt like a part of the unit still. And even though they were sidelined, Baker and Brown found a way to lead. Baker would be voted captain, and Brown would earn the respect of his coaches and teammates through every rep. As to which game he was looking to playing the most, that answer was easy. Uh, UMass, week one. I haven't played in a long time, so I'm just excited to play that first week in front of home fans, even away fans. It's gonna be very exciting. Brown and his teammates are very exciting, and as practice turned to games, you could feel that BC momentum was very real. Boston College unveiled what is one of the most feared offenses in the ACC. Walker in motion, that clears it out for Dillon. He dives for the pylon. Touchdown, Boston College. The center is John Baker, one of the two captains voted on by his teammates back in the lineup this year after missing most of last year with a knee injury. Up to make a leaping grab. Wide open down the left sideline and walking into the end zone. A 34 yard strike to White. Against UMass, Kobe White was taking care of the air while Zach Allen was grounding the Minutemen. Brown. Going for it, it's going to be a touchdown for the Eagles. Once again, it's Ray Martin, the red shirt junior for BC. And like you said, it seems like there are five tight ends out there every time. BC was having a great opening day. Throwing it to the left side and caught by Kobe White. Touchdown, Boston College. Teardrop throw by Anthony Brown. 27 yard reception, Kobe White. Final play of the half, Ford back to pass, rushes on, he eludes it, throws, and it is picked off, picked off by Lucas Dennis, past the 50 to the 40, to the UMass 35, Dennis in the open field, to the 25, Dennis to the 20, 15, 10, 5, 10, hey, Boston College at the buzzer, Lucas Dennis with a touchdown return. The Eagles would put up 48 points in an explosive half of football as their stars on both sides of the ball were making splash plays. Oh, he gets blown up. Speak Allen. There's a screen, and it's picked off off a deflection. BC football picked up by Ray Smith. I think for any team, it's, it's important to get off to a fast start. You want to dictate the season. The first games are always tricky games. You know, not knowing anything really about the, the other teams. It's a new team every year. Film from last year is only so helpful. Um, you want to see that you guys are clicking early, and you want to see that you're ahead of other teams early in the season so that w when it comes down to it, you, your season's off to a great start. And that's a handoff for Dylan. Cuts it to the right. Dylan off to the races again, 35. Dylan breaking tackles, spins forward across midfield. A.J. Dylan inside the 30. One man to beat, gets a block. A.J. Dylan touchdown! 74 yards, 13 to nothing. The great start continued in game two against Holy Cross. A.J. Dylan only played for about a quarter, but the preseason ACC player of the year lived up to the hype. He amassed 149 yards and three touchdowns. It was hardly a one-dimensional game as the defense was happy to contribute. Rushes on, Clifford steps up, throws, intercepted! Heading the other way with a convoy of blockers. And going all the way is Ham Cheevers. Ham Cheevers, the pick six and a touchdown! The Eagles were soaring and both sides of the ball helped light up the scoreboard. 
And Matt McDonald from Newport Beach, California, slings it over to the far side, wide open man inside the 40, stays in bounds, breaking tackles inside the 20, taking it inside the 10 for a touchdown. Young players got valuable playing time with two freshmen hooking up for a touchdown as the Eagles stay unbeaten with the next game circle. Wake is always a is always an important game for us, you know. We're two, you know, we're kind of held in the same regard in the ACC, smaller schools, good academics. So um, it's kind of a natural rivalry and it's a, it's a very important game. It's our first in-conference game. Football is about adjustments and the primetime matchup had to be moved up a few hours to avoid a hurricane. Here, Dallas in it, Dallas in it. Push, push, push. Ball shows up. Trying to two Anthony Brown, their sophomore quarterback, gives it to A.J. Dillon, who bursts through. 35, 30, Dillon, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, Dillon, end zone. Is he in? Yes, he is. Touchdown, Boston College. Dillon on the ground opened up the passing game, but Wake wasn't going away. Fake, they fake to Jeff Sweet. Brown, plenty of time. Down the middle, wide open. Cock, Jeff Smith. 27-yard touchdown, Jeff Smith. Great throw by Anthony Brown, and the Eagles lead 13 to 7. Wake Forest grabs the lead for the first time tonight. And uh, Smith with some room. Past the 35 to the 40 to the 45, 50 on his horn. Cuts back inside of the 40. Smith tackles at the 34. Omey White got it. Touchdown, busted cut. He unloads for the end zone. Sweeney open. Got it. Tom Sweeney in the end zone. Touchdown. Boston College. What a throw by Anthony Brown. It was a breakout game for Boston College, and in particular, quarterback Anthony Brown, who deflected praise, giving all the credit to his offensive line and the job they did, giving him the time and space to pick apart the Demon Deacon defense. Play fake, Anthony Brown back to throw, 21, he lost it wide open, Jeff Smith, 50, Jeff Smith on his horse, to the 30, 25, see you later, touchdown, Boston College, Jeff Smith is the eagle in the end zone. Don't even ask, bow, bow. <laughs> Take him out, Jeff Smith. Anthony Brown kept Wake Forest on their heels in this critical conference opener. He had plenty of reasons to skip, including a career-high five touchdown passes. Brown, short drop this time. Again, going over the top. It is caught inside the five and touchdown. Ben glides. What a throw and catch. Boston College wins the highest scoring game in a series that's nearly 80 years old, 41-34. It was an emotional night that had the Eagles dodging a hurricane and beating a conference rival in a tough environment. It's the kind of win that not only draws a team closer for the remainder of the season, but for the rest of their lives. I tell you what. I love that win. You know why I love that win? I'm going to tell you why. Because we said we had to go out like a team. We said we were going to have to get this thing deep in the fourth quarter. We said we'd all have to draw off of each other. I watched the defense out there. I watched Zach Allen refuse to come off the field. Wyatt Ray coming around the corner time after time again. Uh -huh. hey, they ran, they ran 104 plays. We played about a quarter last week. We got ourselves on the road. It's hard to go get an ACC win. That's a talented team. We went on the road in a short week. We had to go deep into 104 plays on defense. We kept coming after them. And on offense, we ran the ball. We threw the ball. We did the things we had to do. We were explosive. We never wavered. We spotted them 15 points in special teams. We spotted them 15 on the road in the ACC, and we found a way to win the game. Yeah, now I'm telling you, listen to me. That win, that way we had to play to dig deep to get it, that's going to build the metal of this program and this football team. I promise you, that's what will happen. You can feel good about the metal, the iron, the toughness of this football program. BC tough. From my perspective, as the head coach watching the whole thing, that's as good a team win as I've been around. You're looking to your guys' eyes, your resolve, you build off of that, man. You build off that. You need to feel great about that. Feel great about that.
My name is Will Harris, and this is my story. Mm -hmm. Best spe special teams coordinator in the country. Coach. Yes, sir. See ya. Coach Ricky Brown. Just, mm, just doing a little bit. I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. My mother and father and two younger siblings, Dre and Naya. I started playing football at a young age. That growing up, um, I was always active. Uh, me and my father used to go out and throw the football for hours and just run for hours until I was tired. And so football has always been a big part of my life. Coach Camp. Best DB so coach in the nation. Yeah. And all that. What's up? What's up? Yeah, yeah. Good to see you, man. Yes, sir. You following this guy around? Yeah, doing a little something, yeah. something in here. Yeah. The best in the business right here, man. <laughs> Don't get better than this guy. Can't coach a better guy. I always felt the love here, and I felt uh, a sense of uh, home um, in Chestnut Hill. And every time I came here, I was always, it was always consistent. I was always treated the same. Um, the coaches would always tell me, um, how much they wanted me and how much they felt they needed me here. And I always, I felt needed. I felt that and it was genuine. Good, you gotta come out, good. Good, here we go. He's one of the most highly intelligent guys just in general, but uh, from a football IQ perspective, just really, really bright guy. I mean, he's like having another coach on the field. So uh, you cannot coach a better guy <laughs> than this guy. I mean, he's, uh, he's top of the line. There, there's nobody better. Screen almost picked off at the 29 by Hamp Cheevers. Will Harris picks up the loose ball. Here comes Harris to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone. Will Harris with a touchdown. And Harris, very smartly, as you're always coach, pick up the ball and run with it. He took off, and BC leads 27-7. I get on the field, and it's just like I go into a whole other mode. I feel at home on the field. Just everything from game day to just in-game situations. I love the competitiveness. I love the physicality. I love just, you know, being across from another another guy and your job is to, you know, beat that guy, out leverage that guy, you know, defeat a block, whatever, make a tackle. I love those individual one-on-ones that, that you have to face during this 11-man game uh, that we play. So, you know, just the whole atmosphere, the band striking up, you know, getting the goosebumps before games just thinking about the game from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep and the ups and downs it takes you in, the life lessons it, it brings to you. I think all aspects of football have a good part of uh, who I am today. I mean, you come in, this is literally one of the first things that you know you see when you walk in every day. Uh, every player sees you know the Heisman coming in, every player comes in right here, touches the eagle. You can't, you can't, you can't do it soft. You can't, you can't just pat it by. You gotta, you gotta show him some love when you come in here. You gotta, you gotta show him some love. You know what I mean? Was it ripped away? It was. That is a turnover. Intercepted by Boston College. Will Harris just ripped it away. I mean, this, this walkway right here. I mean, we go. I put on my helmet. Probably start putting my helmet right about now. Before I come out, you hear the fans lined up right outside. You hear the band playing right outside. Uh, everyone is, you know, is rowdy. The whole stadium jumping. Once you come out. It's on, all this is roped off. I come out, touch the eagle again. Everybody touches the eagle. We get in this line right here. It's, a, it's usually a banner right here. We come behind, can't nobody see us. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. One minute. Two minutes, you guys go. We're just gonna see with yours. And then, man, once that banner breaks open, there's fans everywhere. You know, night games, we got the flame torches up. All that, man, coming out in the smoke, and nothing better. There's nothing more powerful than that. And you're a part of it. You own it. It's here. Love on that.
that man. That's powerful stuff here in this locker room. And it's the most powerful thing to come out as one and play as one. Coach Adazio, um, again, going back to my recruiting days, uh, always kept it real with me and always was very genuine with me, even when I was in high school. I mean, he told me that, you know, if I came here, it'd be tough at first, but he said I'd fit right in here. Uh, he was 100% right, and the first time I had my first meeting with Coach Adazio, I told him he can expect nothing less but the best for me. He can expect nothing less than all I have and my 100% effort for this program. And throughout this, throughout my time at BC, you know, I've tried to do nothing but um, uphold that standard and that promise I made to him. And so, Coach Adazio, man, is a great coach, always pushing us, pushing his guys, but at the same time, making sure that we know that he loves us and it comes from a genuine place. And I feel like not too many, not too many programs have that, um, where it's, it, it's personal, it's genuine. And, you know, I love that guy, and that's one of the guys that I will always be able to contact, not only, you know, right after football or after, you know, BC, but my whole life. Back home, all eyes were on how the Eagles would respond to their first loss, a game that would reveal a lot about their character and where they were headed facing a Temple team that was playing tough football. Brown looks back left, he's got him wide open, and what a nice catch, an adjustment, touchdown. Tommy Sweeney. Sweeney continued his hot start, while the offensive line gave Anthony Brown all the time he needed to find Jeff Smith. And when the game was in doubt, the defense made the big plays at the biggest times. Russo deflected, picked off, Camp Cheevers. Dylan run a left, cuts it up, got a first down and a lot more, and it's a race to the end zone. Dylan! Dylan continued to show not only his talent, but toughness. He ran for 161 yards and found the end zone twice before an ankle injury knocked him from the game in the third quarter. Since Dylan became a starter midway through last season, the Eagles are 16th in the country in scoring, averaging just under 38 points a game and he is the most productive runner in the country in rushing yards. Rousseau is picked again. This one was not a great throw, and Tajamir Torres hit hard and down inside the 10. Here's the pitch, now the reverse, the throw, and there's the quarterback. Touchdown, Jeff Smith throwing the touchdown to Anthony Brown. A brilliantly designed play that gave Anthony Brown a taste of the receiving end of a score. The defense preserved the lead. Defensive end Zach Allen was all over the Owls, leading the team with eight tackles, four for losses, and a couple of sacks. Another total team effort had BC back on the One, winning two, track. Three, for Boston, for Boston, we sing our proud refrain. Here on one and our hearts are true and the towers of